the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 232 2 Chronicles 1-4 to History, Strength for the Future The foundation and leadership of the country laid down by David continued to Solomon and the great project of building the Temple of God unfolded. First point, the record of Solomon's temple construction in 2 Chronicles most likely provided the people who had returned from Babylon after 70 years with hope and inspiration. There is a saying, born with a silver spoon in one's mouth. This suggests that a person was born with all the fortunate circumstances. In the Bible, the person who was truly born with a silver spoon was Solomon. No one else in the Bible had better circumstances than Solomon. The record of Solomon can be found all throughout the Bible, including Psalms. 1 Chronicles, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and some of the songs also contain records about Solomon. But the book that writes most thoroughly about Solomon is 2 Chronicles. The details of Solomon's temple construction were especially thoroughly recorded and was most likely intended to have been recorded to give inspiration to the people of South Judah who came back as captives. When they returned to Jerusalem after 70 years from Babylon, Jerusalem was in a state of destruction and desolation. As said by Jeremiah, Jerusalem had its Sabbath for the past 70 years. Although they were able to come back to their land, their reality was no home, no temple, and remnants of burnt ashes. They were to rebuild the temple. With the record of Chronicles and Solomon's temple building, God gave them new courage and inspiration. Second point. Chronicles emphasizes that all of Solomon's wisdom and wealth was given by God. Two Chronicles starts with the story of Solomon. Solomon, son of David, established himself firmly over his kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Two Chronicles does not include the instances of the coup d'etat and other conflicts. It does, however, record how Solomon went up to Gibeon to make an offering to God. At the time, the ark had been moved to Jerusalem, but the temple had not yet been built. Thus, all rational affairs took place in Gibeon. At Gibeon, Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings to God. That night, God came to Solomon. In the Book of Kings, it is recorded that God appeared to Solomon in his dream. But in Chronicles, it is written that God appeared to Solomon directly. Solomon did not ask for wealth or fame, but he asked God for wisdom to govern over God's people. Thus, God gave him wisdom as well as fame and wealth. To compare the national circumstances during David's time and Solomon's time, the army expanded much more during the latter. National expenditure was also much higher during Solomon's time. Also, Solomon's time expanded in terms of international trade. However, Solomon did not keep the law of a kingdom of priests, concerning that kings should not accumulate too many wives or wells. Solomon should have been more alert concerning this. The record in Chronicles does not stress this too much, but rather emphasizes that God blessed him with a lot of wisdom and wealth. Chronicles skips the story of Solomon's infamous trial and goes straight onto how Solomon started constructing the temple. This was because the people of South Judah had missed the temple the most 
for the past 70 years. Solomon did not ask for wealth or fame to God. The only thing Solomon asked for was wisdom for life. But God gave him wealth and fame on top of it. This was the message God wanted to give to the people who had returned. Third point, Solomon's construction of the temple became a collaborative project and it finally began. The records in two chronicles regarding the construction of the temple is as follows. The first is that Solomon started to prepare for the construction of his palace as he began the construction of the temple. Second, the people who would actually build the temple were confirmed. Third, request was made to King Hiram of Tyre to help with the temple. The content of what Solomon asked from King Hiram can be found in 2 Chronicles 2 verses 7 to 8. At this, Hiram said yes immediately. Finally, the project began for the temple. A great deal of preparations had been made beforehand leading up to this day. The best technicians were put forth for this project, including the best materials provided by Tyre. Even foreign workers were hired for this project. 153,000 and 600 foreign workers, 30,000 Israelites and 250 governors were hired. Thus, approximately 183,850 people were put forth for the construction of the temple. Fourth point, Chronicles emphasized the importance of the location of the temple. The temple, which had been prepared by David, now began construction under Solomon. The writer of Chronicles emphasizes the importance of the physical grounds of the temple. The place where the temple was constructed was where Abraham had offered Isaac to God. The first to be built was the holy place. Next was the most holy place, which was the inner building. The third was the two pillars in front of the holy place. Chronicles as such records the details and the logistics behind the temple construction. This was for the people of South Judah to report to as they were to restore the temple. Fifth point, all of the materials used for the temple were crafted and carved with care. Now the furniture for the temple was made. Indeed, a substantial amount of effort was put into every detail. This was because the temple was the place where the people came to meet with God. Although it appeared to be a construction area at the time, the builders were not to forget that it was a holy place where God's presence was to dwell. Finally, the details of the temple were completed. Solomon put a lot of care not only into the holy place and the most holy place, but also other details. This was because God's interests were also in them. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.